time to mock the weaker. What a busy one it's been. Under the election fever that's gripped many parts of the world, Wimbledon kicked off. Who knew? Then, in France, Marine Le Pen declared her party had practically wiped out Emmanuel Macron after winning the first round of voting in the French election. The fallout of the Joe Biden-Trump debate rumbled on with calls for him to step down. And in the meantime, election fever gripped the UK. Sir Keir Starmer announced that he may not work after 6pm when he's Prime Minister. He told a radio station that he does not do a work-related thing after 6pm. Pretty well come what may. He wants to protect time with his family and will continue with this habit. Great work if you can get it. I respect the notion, but you're the Prime Minister uh, dealing on an international scale. I'm not sure that will fly. Rishi Sunak uh, suggested that Keir wouldn't actually have enough time to get the job done properly, but then he would say that. Whatever you think of Rishi, though, he was hardworking as a pro the former Prime Minister. And, of course, the former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, came out in support of him. Uh, he was uh, the man who actually betrayed him. But... Uh, that was not enough to stem the flow of votes for the Labour Party. And Sir Keir Starmer was elected with a landslide victory. I think it was some 400, over 400 seats. The Tories got just 121. The Liberal Democrats, 72, reform. I think they just got five or six, despite the fact that they got half a million more votes than the Liberal Democrats. And the SNP, well, they got nine, squashing their stranglehold on Scottish politics. But in my view... The real winners were Reform, who came second to the Labour Party in 98 seats and taking over 4 million votes, half a million more, as I said before, than the Liberal Democrats, who took 72. That can't be right. Yesterday, uh, Keir picked his cabinet, which was almost unchanged. Angela Rayner remained his deputy. Rachel Reeve became the first female chancellor. And David Lammy, the foreign secretary. Uh, but to be fair... The Labour Party were the only credible option to lead the country. In Keir's speech today, he promised to be a Prime Minister for even those who didn't vote for him or those who voted for him for the first time. However, he didn't take a question from GB News. It's been a mucky old week. Some 80% of British voters didn't vote for you. That's including those who didn't vote at all. What does that mean in practice in a sense, for the culture of the government and how you'll govern? Um, it was very important to me to say what I said on the steps yesterday about those that didn't vote for us, because we're a government of service um, to all people, whether they voted for us or not. Um, and I include within that people who voted Labour for the first time on Thursday.